Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So this is the Honor 400. It is launching today in Europe alongside the Honor 400 Pro for the European and Southeast Asia market. Now I did not get the Pro model for review. I only got this standard non-Pro model, but um, there's only like a few things that are different between the two. So the Pro model, it's bigger. It's like a conventional flagship phone size, 6.7 inch screen. Also the screen is quad curved on all four sides. So just like an Honor flagship display. On the non-pro, it is a 6.5 inch screen, so smaller screen, and it is a completely flat panel. Both screens are OLED, 120 hertz, get up to 5,000 nits of brightness. Flip it around to the back. The pro model has a triple camera array covering the usual wide, ultra wide, and telephoto focal length. On the non-pro, you only have two cameras. You have a main camera covering wide, and then you have an ultra-wide camera, that's it, no zoom lens. But otherwise, the sensors, the main and ultra-wide sensors are the same as the Pro. Um, the Pro model is also powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon HN3, which is a one-year-old flagship top-tier silicon, whereas this guy is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3, so it's a slightly less capable chip, but you're only going to notice the difference if you are a heavy gamer or you're trying to edit videos on this guy. Otherwise, you know, basic smartphone usage, the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 is more than powerful enough. That's about it in terms of differences. They have the same battery, 5,300 mAh, the same software, and in fact, the same AI features, including a really cool new AI feature that I think is the biggest selling point of this phone. So a lot of similarities between the two phones. The Pro model, I believe it's retailing in Europe starting at, this is converted from the European price, about 750 US dollars, while the non-Pro is retailing for about converted 550 US dollars. And um, I'm just gonna be honest right away, 550 for this phone is probably a little bit high, but the good news is, you know, that's the European pricing. This phone is also going to go on sale in Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia. I'm pretty sure the price will be more reasonable in this region. I think if you can get a price that's converted to about like 400 to 450, then I think this guy has a lot of appeal. 550, it's, it's like $100 too high. But let's look at the overall hardware. What do you get for this price? So like I said earlier, 6.5 inch OLED display. 5,000 nits of brightness, 120 hertz, buttery smooth animations, and also has a relatively high 3,840 PWM, that's pulse width modulation. That means how often the screen flickers when it's in low brightness mode. And the higher the PWM, the better it is for your eyes. Samsung and Google phones have really low PWM, so there are people that are sensitive to that and they see flickers when they're on low brightness and it kind of gives them a headache. Honor has been a leader in this front, and I'm happy to see that the PWM here for a mid-range phone is still quite high. You'll also notice that the Honor 400's corners are more rounded than most other Android phones. Like if you compare it to something like my Galaxy S25 Edge here, you see that the corner radius, it's rounder on the Honor 400 than on the Galaxy S25 Edge or compared to my Vivo X200 Pro. It's, um, it's a personal preference. I like the more rounded look. Now this is a completely flat panel, so I will say that the Edge where the screen ends and blends into the, the aluminum chassis, it's a little bit sharp. Not quite as sharp as the iPhone 13 and 14 Pro, like those phones were so uncomfortable to hold, but this is definitely a little bit like of a rougher corner than Honor's flagship phones. I'm pretty sure the Honor 400 Pro, it's gonna have a much more smoother in-hand feel. So it does feel a little bit weird to have that little kind of pointy corner. It makes the phone slightly not as comfortable to hold as like a more rounded phone. But at the same time, because this guy is a relatively small phone, it weighs only 184 grams, and it measures only 7.3 millimeters thick, so still very comfortable to hold. 6.5 inch in 2025 is considered a compact phone, at least by my standards. Now you move to the back, it's a glass back, but I have to be honest, I don't like this color at all. This color, this black color looks very dull. I feel like if you're gonna do black, might as well go completely pitch black, matte black. This kind of like, it's like a deep gray. It just looks very dull to my eyes. On top of that, I'm really not a fan of this um, labeling right here, but this is not really honest fault. This is the EU, the, the European Union. They mandate all the phones, put this stupid label on the back, you know, that tells you, oh, there's a battery inside. Don't throw it in the trash can, stuff like that. It's an eyesore. The good news is this phone also comes in two other colors. I haven't seen them in person, but I would bet money the other two colors, gold and silver, look better than this phone. 5,300 mAh battery inside, which is huge for a phone of this size and thickness, and charges at 66 watt speeds, but the charger is not included in the box, at least for my 
unit, which is the Europe unit, because the EU, I think, is mandating no charges in the box. So if you buy this in Asia, you might get a charger, but not in Europe, because the EU, man, the EU like to freaking meddle in everything, man. But anyway, um, this camera system here, you have a 200 megapixel main camera, f1.9 aperture, 1 over 1.4 inch sensor size. Now, this sensor size, it's a little bit small compared to all the other flagships I'm used to testing, but the good news is Honor software processing is very mature because there's no zoom lens here. So you're using this main camera for a lot of different things. Like when you're taking portraits, for example, there's no portrait lens. So you have to use in sensor crop to get a 2x zoom or digital 3x zoom to get a portrait. When you want to zoom in on video, it's all zooming in on that 200 megapixel sensor. But because luckily 200 megapixel is quite pixel dense and Honor software is good, you can get pretty good results, particularly portraits. Starting with the Honor 200, Honor introduced this new portrait color profile system in, uh, made in partnership with Studio Hardcore in France. It's basically portrait photography with colors that are adjusted to recreate the look of Studio Hardcore. And I was a big fan of that on the Honor 200 Pro, and that carries over here. Even without a dedicated portrait lens, I've been able to get some really good portraits on this phone. Oh. Now the ultra wide camera, 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture. It's, it's a little bit, um, it's actually, it's, it's okay for a mid range phone. Okay. You're watching 4k 30 right now with the honor 400. So 4k 30 footage with the honor 400. I am in Tokyo, Japan. Look at these nice bikes, man. And the fact that in Japan, you don't even have to really lock them. You just can't leave them here like this. I mean, they're locked, but like barely, you know? Cause like in the US or Europe, you have to like lock that shit up with like three U-locks probably. And now uh, this is ultra wide camera now, ultra wide. Okay, I can see the ultra wide is pretty weak, but you switch back to the main camera and improves quite. And on top of that, Honor has a really fun AI trick this year. Now Honor's been all in on AI for, for like a year now and a couple of generations of the phones. But this year, the Honor 400 phone is the first phone in the world to use Google's VO2 language models. So VO2 is Google's AI platform that can turn a still image into a moving video. So this phone can turn any photo, not just photo snap by this phone, but any photo can turn it into a five second video clip. And the results are actually pretty damn good. Like look at right here. I took this portrait of this guy at the coffee shop and then with a couple of taps on the button, I'm able to turn it into a video. The video doesn't just have the guy moving his head, but there's also camera movements. Look at that pan. So the AI has to generate a lot of information there. Not only does the AI have to create a face for this guy because the picture only showed the side of his face, but the AI also had to generate new pixels for the buildings in the background because the camera is moving. This is a very dynamic shot. Likewise, here's a picture of two of my friends. They were standing still, but then the picture can turn it into a video where they're moving their hands and even smiling. Here's another shot of my friends. Now, this is not a picture I took with the Honor 400. This picture was taken like three years ago. And check it out. Everybody is moving independently in the photo. This is really amazing technology that's also a little bit scary. And I know AI manipulating images, it's a sensitive topic. A lot of people are going to hate this because they think it's like, creating false memories. You're creating something that never happened. And I, I kind of agree with that to a point, but I also want to say stuff like this just brings joy to some people. Like for example, after I told my mom about this feature, she started sending me old photos of herself and her friends or her relatives for me to turn into like a video. And I can see the smile on my mom's face to see 25, 30 year old photos of her and her family in motion it brings back happy memories for her like my mom is 70 something usually when you get to that age you start having kind of maybe maybe sad memories of, of the time that has passed so while i do agree ai needs to be regulated because it's kind of creating too many fake stuff out there stuff like this you know when used the right way it can be for good like i can see my mom she's genuinely like she was touched by seeing photos of herself like in the past that now moves even though it's a fake video like it, that never happened so anyway vo2 it's 
Google software. So it is not like Honor created this, but Honor worked in collaboration with Google to bring it to the Honor 400. Now I'm pretty sure this feature will make it to other Android phones later, probably to the Pixel first and the Samsung Galaxy, but Honor is the first to do it. And who knows how long of a, of a head start Honor will have. We might have to wait six months, eight months, 10 months before other phones can do it. So right now, the Honor 400 does have this trick that no other phone can do. Now as for the rest of the software, this one runs Magic OS 9 based on Android 15. I've already said before, I'm actually starting to really like Magic OS. I really love the completely free flowing home screen, particularly the app folder. So you can resize an app folder into any shape. You can make it like a long rectangle, like a snake, or you can make it like a big square. You can make it like a tall rectangle. So you can reshape the folder to fit into the home screen. You can also expand an app to show a shortcut button next to the app. So you can access that shortcut directly on the home screen. I also like things like Magic Portal, which you basically long press on an image or a chunk of text. You can drag that to a menu on the side. And that menu has a list of apps like email, uh, Instagram, Twitter, you know, Spotify, whatever. And you can upload that picture or text directly to the app. What used to take five, six taps now takes two taps on Magic Portal. And I also like copying chunks of text that way. I can copy text directly from a website into an email draft body or Google Keep or Google Docs. So I think Honor software is actually very useful now and I quite like it. Um, you know, my Android skin ranking, I still have Color OS number one and then maybe Origin OS number two, One UI number three, and then I think Magic OS is like getting up there number four, which is saying a lot because before, like two years ago, I did not like Magic OS at all because it was too much like Huawei's UI. I am not a fan of Huawei's UI at all. I still say that actually. So yeah, anyway, that's about, that's about it for the Honor 400. This is, you know, basically a mid-range phone. Without a zoom lens, it's not a phone that I'm going to use as my daily driver because I care about telephoto photography too much. But if you're someone on the market for a mid-range phone and you care about AI features, the Honor 400 is maybe worth a look if you can find it at a good deal because I think 550 in Europe, it's probably too high. However, there may be deals in Europe. I hear Honor, they have a lot of partnerships in Europe. So maybe you buy this, you can get a watch, stuff like that. Because I just saw a deal in Hong Kong where if you buy this phone, you can get like an Honor watch for free. Then that sweetens the deal. But basically my point is, 550 US dollars for this is a little bit too much. I'm more comfortable saying this is like a 400, 450 dollar phone. If you get around 450, then you have yourself a very well all rounder that has all day battery life, has a great screen, has a lot of useful AI features, and is the first phone to be able to turn still images into videos. So yeah, that's about it for this review of the Honor 400. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot more coming. I'm going to WWDC, so I'll be reporting live on the ground from Apple headquarters very soon. So stay tuned. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.